Every year, the developers have a day-long anniversary streaming event, where they often showcase a lot of juicy stuff and answer various community questions. It really feels like the only time of the year where the main guys directly interact with the community and is definitely worth checking out. For example, this year they showed off many different weapon prototypes, which were later featured on Twitter. I'm sure nobody will come back to bite them when half of these weapons don't actually make it in. But that's not what we're gonna focus on. I am mainly interested in a fairly underrated segment, which is the art showcase. I'll be dissecting the hell out of those segments. I mean, they literally asked for it. Are you ready for for uh, the people that will take this video and dissect it? Uh, oh. Like, look at all the stuff that's in here. I encourage it. I recommend it. A year ago. Uh, I'll pretend that was a tactical decision. I totally didn't dissect it last year, so the developers would show even more stuff this year. Yep, that was the plan, 100%. I will be covering both 2020 and 2021 art maps. I'll be mostly referring to them as second year and third year maps. I'm sure many of you are likely interested just in the latter, because it's more recent. So check the seek bar or the description for the chapters and just skip to it. I'll admit that one was way more fruitful. Alright, let's start with the second year anniversaries art map. We'll be dumping out all the times he goes back to the space rig, since that's not our focus. Actually, I believe the art map's actual name is level underscore Robert underscore gray box tester space. Let's start with various machinery and rig models. One of the first things we get to see are some early terminal models, most notably the extra early mission terminal right there. There's multiple parts where you get to see tons of space rig models and I have no doubt some of these are still unused to this day. I'll save you the hassle of having to watch me rummaging through all this stuff, so here are my highlights instead. Paste tube, curved computer table, some cool lamps, scout variation of the dwarf figure, some air fresheners, sticky note smile, cool experimentation for the equipment modifying area, giant jukebox, various monitors, and yellow floppy disk. Here we get to take a look at the drop pod's cool interior without the seats. Also, if we freeze it here, we can see this strange spherical thing, which I can only assume might be an even earlier Matrix Core model. It's actually an unused material canister model. I found out by finding the exact icon and under it it said material canister. And of course, the true highlight of the second year's art map, a brand new mini mule model. I speculate that the main reason for why it's not used as of this video is simply because the legs are too small and would be annoying to haul. Oh yeah, there's a differently colored Betsy right next to Molly as well. Moving on to cosmetics now, I generally don't care about these too much unless it's weapon skins, but I'll do my best. Uh, the naked dwarf. Not, <laughs> he's, not, he's not naked, I promise. He's just wearing skin clothes? A normal, non-nude, skin clothing wearing dwarf. Here's the old barrel armor I've shown off a while ago, and Robert proceeds to promise that I'll make it into the game. We are going to do a barrel armor, I promise, but this one is just too old. Now it's... they got that on tape. Now yes. we have to do it. Don't laugh, I mean, son. No, no, I, I'm, 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 willing to, I'm willing to take this on me. We will get a barrel armor. Of course he did. At this part, you can just sort of make out exactly what that is, but they appear to be some sort of Halloween experimentations. Either that or material glitches. Here we see some paint job tests. This dwarf is also rocking an unused ponytail hairstyle. For a little bit, we get to see the unused BFF hat once more. This thing would have actually been added to the game if DRG would have won 2018 Steam Awards. I guess we still got a cap with DRG on it, which is less if not equally as dumb. For a brief second here, you can spot out a seemingly cotton candy colored cryo cannon. If we go back a little bit on pause, it appears that each weapon was colored this way. My assumption is that no, it wasn't meant to be an actual cotton candy skin. Rather, it was a paint job test of some sort to distinctively see which parts of the weapon will be affected by the currently applied skin. Also, moving away from cosmetic items for a bit, here we can see this strange blob with holes inside of it. My guess is just as good as yours what that thing is meant to be. I don't know, a giant asteroid? If we pause a bit earlier at this part again, we get to see a bunch of things at the top left. Most notably, glyphs with missing legs, which I've mentioned in Classified 11, a frozen Bosco, a frozen Trawler, and Shellback, all of which cannot actually be frozen in-game. If 
Finally, near the end of the segment, Robert shows off an early concept of the bulk detonator, seemingly much smaller. Time for the big one, the art showcase of the third year's anniversary. This is the leakiest that I'll get with DRG because it's all fair game as far as I'm concerned. And uh, some of you may need digital painkillers after update 34. I don't know, I thought it was an okay update. Alright, let's get started. Straight away we... Did you see that? Did they really think they could hide that from me? That there are upcoming weapon meshes and I'm at least 90% sure that they are based off this concept. Wow, already off to a great start. Also, third year's showcase includes a previously unseen artboard webpage. We'll be heavily utilizing it. Okay, let's first do biome stuff, specifically Azure Wield. What's a better way to start than with the in-house description for the biome? I'll be pointing out what I believe is notable whenever these long texts pop up. There's also this part that describes organs hanging from vines. This was all part of a brainstorming session, but perhaps on a conceptual level the area was thought of as a sort of living being? There's also low-hanging fog around players' feet, which didn't end up making it in, very likely due to performance issues or the art team simply didn't like it. And below here we see concept art for a zero wheel they've previously teased. Except there's three extra boxes which were crossed out. A bit strange since the green one appear to be some sort of void baskets. Maybe the X's are more of a we're not going for this color palette thing? Oh yeah, and glowing liquid on the center box. When it comes to that image in the ref section area, yeah, I have no idea. Next we get to see some cool concept art for various Azure wheeled plants. It also seems like there's a lot more concept art that they never end up showing. Most notable are the screenshots for potentially unseen plants and barely visible creature concepts. Is that a Chinese dragon? Now a few bits on the art map. Throughout the stream we get to occasionally see this red tree with large bulbs. Because of its spikiness, it does appear to belong to Hollowbow, but I dare make the argument it might have been originally meant for Azure Wield, just because some of the concept art for the plants somewhat resemble this tree. And fairly late into the segment, the developer jumps into a large physics plant. Undoubtedly was meant for Azure Wield. If you do have doubts, uh, we can see this plant but painted red in one of the screenshots from earlier. It looks like a really cool plant. Probably isn't included due to technical issues. Well, that's all the interesting things I could find on Azure Wield. You may notice a pattern of the devs going in detail with one thing and then sort of skipping through another. You'll see that again with the two mission types from Update 32. Either something cool is still hiding there, or they just didn't want to take too long with the segment. Either way, time to mine for Hollowbow stuff. And here's the in-house description for it. I particularly found this part interesting. We do get a few natural bridges via thorns, but also sounds like there was an idea that some parts of the terrain would actually be hollow. Then there's this. Dry and brittle. Could have things break and fall away under players. As of this video, there are no weak surfaces which break on contact in the biome. Also, we get to see Hollowbow's concept art boxes for the first time, and of course, lots of other artwork. Interesting how there would have been various objects that the roots would have grown around. A bit later, they show off this early screenshot filled with various thorns, and probably plants. Not only do the thorns have a different design here, but there's also whatever this thing is supposed to be, and seemingly holes with large spikes sticking out of them. We're then shown more screenshots for a bit. Those strange tree formations can later be found on the art map itself. Oh cool, concept art for a giant worm. Of course. Lastly, there's some notes at the very bottom here, one of them talking about dripping zap, which again, as of this video, isn't in the game. Checking up on the art map now, I've spotted out these weird looking tree things. I can't confirm for what biome these might have been planned for, but my best guess would be Hollowbow since it already has this whole weird tree theme going for it. If not, then it's definitely Caustic Wire. Later, there's this spiky plant with legs. We did get to see something similar in the concept art. Here we get to see, and I kid you not when I say the developer actually called it the nipple tree. I'd make a lactating joke, but... And finally, a detailed variation of one of those goo plants. I think this version wasn't used for performance reasons, since there was a note from earlier stating that the poly count should be kept fairly low. Ready for some real shit? At some point during the segment, they finally show off all the biome concept boxes they've made. Now, we already know that top right is Hollowbow, bottom right is Azure Wield, and top left is the currently shelved Caustic Mire biome. That doesn't mean it's cut yet. 
It's still interesting how Caustic Mire seems to be on the surface, even though it's not. You'll just have to take my word for it. But the rest of these boxes are purely unknown and just look really cool. Like the one at the bottom left seemingly appearing to be a very yellow and bubbly area of some sort. I actually prefer the look of this one over Caustic Mire. Here's the thing though. The boxes at the very middle don't seem to have a running theme when compared to the ones at either sides. Like, hey, that box looks like Hollow Bow. That one looks like Caustic Mire. I believe each box in the middle here is representative of a different biome idea. If I'm correct, then wow. We get to see 18 biomes here. Most of which we assumedly haven't even heard of. Mikkel does at one point mention that there's a ton of biome ideas sitting in the backlog, so it's not a far-fetched speculation. I think we have a pool of, I don't know, 25, 50 different biomes uh, that we are uh, in our back catalog uh, where we have different ideas. And you were trying to hide a minigun skin for me. Later, we do get a very zoomed out sneak peek at the concept art of those other two biomes. We can clearly see that Caustic Mire is much more developed when compared to the, you know what, I think I can make out the other biome's name right here. I am 99% sure that it's called Sponge Cluster. I was also able to find Sponge Cluster reference elsewhere. Hmm, obviously I can't make out much else. Caustic Mire appears to have a few screenshots of various models that we can sort of peek at. Some of these models can still be found on the art map. Like near the start of the segment, there are these acid pools visible. If they weren't meant for Caustic Mire, then I don't know what for. Then there are these various mushrooms also visible in one of the screenshots. According to the dev, some of these mushroom models were reused for existing biomes. And lastly, these huge spiky rock formations can also be seen in one of the screenshots. Time to check up on some missions. I know that both descriptions are visible here, but we'll be starting with Escort. One notable early idea is the fact that the vehicle would have originally sat on gas vents and harvested them as the dwarves assumedly defended it. And another one that caught my eye was that drilling ahead of the vehicle originally wasn't going to be allowed. As per usual, they show off a lot of cool references and concept art. Let me just say, in one of these concept arts there's a literal cart on wheels. And this cool thing. There's also some neat concept art for the fuel canister. They do show off some early models for the thing here, seemingly the early version appearing much lighter, but also look more like a gun rather than a tool, which is something they weren't going for. Now that I mention it, I believe an iteration of this model was used for one of the prototype weapons. Definitely as a placeholder though. Besides that, they did show the train dozer on the art map. It's not actually called that. At a few points of the segment, we get to peek at these cool screenshots here. This here being the original screenshot, while the others are some sort of artistic visualizations. We can sort of spot out the early mission HUD here. There's also that thing there which I'm pretty sure are just UE4's notifications. We do get a slightly better look at the early HUD at another point. Also a red glowing early Omeron. We can also peek at a screenshot of another early development phase. Those thick crystal layers were very likely undestructible by dwarves, which would sync up with some of the notes from earlier. At least that's what I think. It appears the devs are doing an all gunner run, and the Omeron cave doesn't seem to be as open as it is now. Speaking of Omeron, from the concept art seems like you were always meant to extract a tiny spherical thing from it. And of course there's all these different appearances sketched out for it. We do get to see some more armor and shell variations on the art map itself a dozen of times. Uh, they look cool. One of them was reused for the Hearthstone and the artist referred to one of these as a croissant, while the game director made an egg and onion joke. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. At this part we can find even more random notes for the mission. The most notable thing here is that the drill would have potentially transformed. Oh yeah, and they called the canister a vacuum cleaner. Now heading back to those early mission descriptions, this time focusing on refinery. Most of it sounds pretty much what we got in the end, but worded differently. Except for this conveyor belt idea, they would have acted as pipes that you could deposit into. At one point there is also a grinder post concept briefly visible. I personally really like the sound of that idea, it would make refinery stand out from point extraction a bit more. I would honestly speculate they cut this idea solely on the fact that these missions would go by even faster with multiple deposit points. Of course, here are some cool references and concept art of the machinery. This little conveyor belt with a cute rocket being my favorite of these. And let me just say, while having the pump jack makes perfect sense, these ones just look more interesting. 
At a couple of points on the art map, these very basic models are visible for a bit. They were likely placeholder models for refinery, or for a yet-to-be-seen mission type? I might be wrong on that one. As for the real stuff, all we got was a very zoomed out shot of the assumedly upcoming mission type boxes. From all the way over here, I can say almost with certainty that this screenshot is actually a recolored and a yet to be used iteration of the mini mule. Yep, the same one we saw in year 2's art map. But besides that, uh, have fun trying to decipher this. This is as zoomed in as it gets. I can see machine, turret, and various round shaped artwork. I can potentially also give you an internal name of one of these mission types, which is Facility. Wow. Well, we had to get this part sooner or later. Time for cosmetic stuff, starting with weapon skins. Here's another funny dev slip up. While he's alt-tabbing, we get a peek at the upcoming framework. Pretty sure it's the same one he tried hiding at the start of the stream. Huh. I knew they had a slack, but didn't know about the Ghost Ship Games Discord server. As the dev is running around, a nerf gun Warthog can be seen for a bit. Here the artist kindly gives us a tease of some weapon frameworks. You forgot to hide the assault rifle by the way. And hey, the full weapon framework list is visible from over here. Sadly, all I can really make out are fancy colors. At this part the artist showcases various drawings for clothing and armor. He shows off a bunch of these. Cool tattoos, and then a bunch more. These all look great, but I feel like all I can really do here is show these to you and pick my favorite, which is probably this one? Fine, let's take a better look at some of these. These ones seen at the very top are assumedly early roughneck concepts. The ones below appear to fall into a similar blue collar theme. This outfit has glasses, which we don't have any of yet, with a danger zone armor note next to it. And the artwork next to this one has blue collar zone scout note? What's up with this zone stuff? If I'm not mistaken, that scout one seems to have a robot arm. Here I can't really make out some of this text, but nice tactical sandals. This here is some heavier stuff, entering the armor territory much more now. And yeah, here we are shown a bunch of clothing artwork, which I feel is fairly self-explanatory. Some of those do have notes that I cannot always make out. We can honestly speculate all day what theme the upcoming DLCs are going to be. Everyone seems to go crazy for the suit one. I don't know, I, I, I see it as just a meme. Also, it's worth noting that the various headwear and beard styles seen here were actually drawn by a community member. Damn, I wonder how it feels to have your fan art referenced by the developers. You can also just barely see that some of these were circled out. Make of that what you will. He then also shows us some pickaxe concept art. I originally had no idea that some of the pickaxes were themed around the four classes and the dev showcases the upcoming headgear they tease on the roadmap. Finally, we're on the home stretch. Now I'll be going through everything else I thought was notable but didn't really fit any of the chapters. Let's quickly get these green squares out of the way. They are markers used for the terrain scatter, nothing too special. There's also this round object seen here, my guess is that this is an early personal drop pod model. A notification from the CEO about what pieces to get everyone could be seen on the stream, unrelated. Multiple times throughout the segment, these giant models related to the space rig can be seen. They'll likely see some use in the future. For quite literally a few frames, this completely dark dragonfly model can be spotted. Eh, I'll call it Voidfly. At one point, we get to see Robert's mini mule models in the distance. As I mentioned earlier, I believe these may get repurposed. Later on, the dev eagerly shows off his favorite food item in the game. A disgusting Glyphid stew. At least that portable stove is getting some use. During the biome segment, there were a few concept arts and screenshots briefly visible of some salt pit features. For a little bit, we get to see extremely zoomed out boxes of presumably various UI mockups, along with, I think, a bunch of rig related things. And one of the last things he shows off is some neat concept art of the tip jar. I just realized one of these has a small loot bug eating your money. Well, that's about it. All the notable things I could dig up from the two art showcases. After all this, do you think they'll be doing another one for the 4th anniversary? Maybe next year I won't bully the Polygon, Polygon Slave for trying to hide things on stream. There's undoubtedly a few more bits and pieces that can be found within the segments. I did leave out a few notes I thought weren't worth mentioning. But I'm satisfied enough of what I've shown. All things considered, it is interesting to have a peek at raw developer thoughts. The inclusion of the artboard page is truly what made 3rd year's showcase rich with information. If you liked this stuff, then you should check out my classified series and video end.